By land, sea, and air, Russia launched a massive missile attack on Ukraine, hurling at least 84 missiles and killer drones against its neighbor in a single night. The deadly barrage pounding Ukraine in the north, south, east, and west, decimating several houses in the western city of Lviv, killing at least two women and three men there. In the capital, Kyiv, one missile strike temporarily knocked out some electric power, while another slammed into the courtyard of a large apartment block. Fortunately, no one was killed here this morning by this missile strike, but it terrified people living next door. No one in Ukraine knows when a deadly Russian missile could explode in their neighborhood. Olya and Nastya Kuvlanovska say the 7 a.m. blast broke windows in their seventh floor apartment. It was uh, very dangerous, so uh, we uh, was very scared of it. But the close call didn't stop them from working today. We've developed immunity after a year of war, says Olya. We don't even run and hide in the basement anymore when there are air raid sirens. The Ukrainian military says air defenses shot down nearly half of Russia's missiles and drones, but can't intercept some of these deadly weapons. There were X-22, which we can't shoot down. We can't shoot down the Kinzhal either. Russia's defense ministry calls the missile barrage retaliation for what it claims was a Ukrainian terrorist attack in Russia's Bryansk region on March 2nd. Claims which CNN has not been able to independently verify. Deadly Russian revenge attacks that leave ordinary Ukrainians picking up the pieces. Now, Jake, the uh, Ukrainian armed forces, they say that the, the risk of further Russian missile attacks is still very high. There also appear to be concessions now that this tactic of firing different kinds of missiles, and in particular the Kinjal hypersonic missiles, that those were able to foil some of Ukraine's air defenses. Uh, and then there's the issue of the utilities and things like heat and uh, electricity that were at least temporarily knocked out. The lights are back on here in Kyiv. The heat, though, is not. 30 percent of homes don't have heat right now mm. in March as a result of these latest strikes. All right. Jay. Ivan Watson in Kyiv for us. Thank you so much. Now to a plea to the West from Ukraine's prime minister today, tweeting, quote, we need more we, we need more weapons and more sanctions to stop the aggressor, while the U.S. has committed more than $30 billion in security assistance since the start of Putin's brutal war. Some of the biggest weapons promised, such as the Patriot air defense missile systems, take months for Ukrainian soldiers to learn how to operate. Let's get right to CNN's Natasha Bertrand at the Pentagon. And Natasha, if Ukrainian troops were up to speed on operating the Patriot missile system, would that system have helped defend Ukraine from today's barrage of missiles? Well, Jake, the short answer is probably yes. Now, the issue here is that some of the missiles that Russia fired at Ukraine today were a kind of ballistic missile. They were the hypersonic missiles. And right now, Ukraine does not have a sufficient air defense system to intercept those kinds of missiles. The air defense system that they have right now are primarily aimed to defend against cruise missiles. And so if they had the Patriot system in place, while this kind of Kinzhal missile has not necessarily been tested against the Patriot uh, in, in, in past history, it is likely that it would have had a better chance of defending those hypersonic missiles than what Ukraine already has. Now, the argument that the White House has been making is that because the vast majority of the missiles that Russia launched at Ukraine this morning were actually regular cruise missiles, then a Patriot system, which is designed to intercept ballistic missiles, likely would not have made much of a difference anyway. Here's what John Kirby said just this morning. The Patriot missile uh, system uh, is really designed to go after ballistic missiles, um, and it's it's not as effective uh, on cruise missiles, and it's certainly not going to be effective uh, against drones. So uh, it's doubtful that you could say, well, if they had the Patriots, that it would make uh, a huge difference in this particular type of uh, barrage, because this was largely cruise missiles. 
So the key word there is largely, it was largely cruise missiles, but it was not only cruise missiles. And these hypersonic missiles that Russia launched at Ukraine, they can do an enormous amount of damage. If they had the Patriots, which they are currently training on in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, then they could have made somewhat of a difference, Jake. All right, Natasha Bertrand, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Joining us now to discuss is the chairman of the House Select Committee on Intelligence, Republican Mike Turner of Ohio. Uh, Mr. Chairman, good to see you. Let's start with Ukraine. You said you support giving Ukraine what they need to win. Um, Quite frankly, I'm, I'm not quite sure that Speaker McCarthy's on board. He just balked at an invitation to visit Ukraine from President Zelensky. And, and he recently repeated his stance that he doesn't support a blank check to Ukraine, even though no one is proposing a blank check to Ukraine. Is there, do you think, the appetite in the House Republican conference for the kind of more aggressive aid that, that you're talking about? Well, the speaker didn't exactly say he wasn't going to go to Ukraine. He said he didn't need to go to Ukraine to understand the need of, of, of what they're looking at, the, the Russian aggression, the, the absolute just you know, indiscriminate killing of innocent people. I've been with the speaker, with Speaker McCarthy, uh, in Poland to the place where we're working diligently to try to make certain that we supply um, Ukraine, but also on the border of Ukraine. He's well up to speed on the issues there, of course, supported uh, sending weapons in, in the last uh, approval process. So I think you know, his uh, approval is there and his support is there. What I think is important here is that as we look to what Russia is doing, they are running out. Uh, even though they're doing this desperation of lobbying everything that they can on, on unbelievably tragic days like today, uh, absent China stepping in, which as you know, Director Burns, the director of CIA, has, has openly stated China was considering and trying to dissuade. Absent a country like China coming in that has an inexhaustible ability to provide them with weapon systems. Russia does have a diminishing ability to attack Ukraine. As long as we continue to their support with their resolve, they're going to continue to hold back Russia. Yeah, as you noted, the CIA director said today that no one is watching Ukraine more intently uh, than China. Have you seen intelligence suggesting that China aiding you, uh, Russia with, with weaponry has gone to anything past the consideration stage? Are they actually going to do it? Well, what the Director Burns has said openly and publicly uh, is that China was considering it, and certainly we're going to monitor it very closely. What is actually obvious is that once China enters, if they would enter, their weapon systems would show up on the battlefield. That would be alarming to all of Europe and all of NATO. Uh, so they would have a reaction greater than just the United States. And I don't think China's prepared for that, and hopefully they'll be dissuaded. So you've also recently praised the Biden administration's decision to declassify and publicize intelligence that China is considering arming Russia. Have you pushed uh, the Biden administration to declassify other matters? Well, certainly, I mean, this Congress is gonna take a vote this Friday, joining the Senate in the call for the declassification of materials with respect to the origins of COVID. Uh, I think that you know, when you look at, especially in space, we've been very effective of declassifying information, allowing our allies to know, identifying the bad behavior that's happening from Russia and China and weaponizing space certainly in Ukraine, declassifying what their uh, strategies were, their plans are. They have an impact on our adversaries. That's a tool that needs to be used more, and it certainly, from this administration, has been used effectively. I want to ask about your fellow uh, member of the Select Committee on Intelligence, Congressman Darren LaHood. Today in the hearing you chaired on worldwide threats, Congressman LaHood accused the FBI of unlawfully monitoring him. Uh, was the F did the FBI do that? Was it improper? Uh, and, and why were they doing it? So what uh, Darren LaHood was referring to is a report by the intelligence community of a, 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 a FISA inquiry that occurred, a query that occurred on a member of Congress and that was identified as improper. Uh, Darren LaHood was coming forward and saying, I have reviewed this material and in his opinion that it referred to him. Um, I concur in his, in, in his opinion that it's, it's likely him. Uh, but the point that was important here is he was saying, look, there are abuses. There are valid and, and really wrong things that, that the in intelligence community has done, more particularly the FBI has done, with FISA. We need to address those abuses as we go forward in reauthorizing this program. But we have to address those abuse, abuses head on before we go to uh, reauthorization and we're going to lose the faith of the American public. And I think they'd lose in Congress. Well, and I mean, we've seen these abuses. I mean, the, there was an abuse like that as it related to uh, Carter Page, I believe, the monitoring of Absolutely. Carter Page uh, and a lack of disclosure of all the information. Why, why renew it uh, if the FBI can't be trusted to do it uh, without violating their own rules? 
I do believe that there are opportunities to reform the whole FISA process. Darren LaHood, who, as you just indicated, came forward and said he believes that he has been, um, you know, not lawfully uh, queried under the FISA system, is the head of that. He's committed to working to solutions, and I think we'll find them. But, but uh, we have to have the cooperation of the FBI, the cooperation of the intelligence community. We have to, you know, look at what were the real abuses that happened, how do we fix this, and how do we protect the American public? Yeah. The chairman of the House Select Committee on Intelligence, uh, Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it thank as you. always.